Hello my viewers, welcome to another Hexmanic Advanced Tutorial. In front of you, you have basic tutorial number 9, using the HMA scripts. This video is centered around automation scripts that will improve your ROM hacking experience. In other words, you can apply these scripts to your ROM and add a couple of extra features. I will go over exactly what they are, and I will demonstrate applying a couple of them, such as the Fairy script and the Pixelate style ability script. Lastly, I'll show you the locations of all of the Hexmanic Advanced scripts you can choose to use in your ROM hacks. Before starting the tutorial, I must remind you that you should get the latest version of Hexmanic Advance, which is at this webpage right here, which I'll also have in the description. The latest version will always be the topmost one from a series of public releases. From the downloads, select the one that best suits your operating system. Also get .NET 6 desktop runtime as you need it for HMA to run. I'll have the website for that linked in the description. Now let's get on with the tutorial. To start off, what is an HMA script and how do you get one? Well, they're utilities that you can apply to your ROM, sort of like patches but better, and you can find the official ones in the folder that comes with your Hexmanic Advanced download. Make sure it's the extracted folder, not the zipped folder by the way. Open your Hexmanic Advanced folder and open the Resources folder inside. Next, click the Scripts folder, and all of the official HMA scripts are here, along with a miniature manual on how to use these scripts. So now I'll explain what they are. All of these files with the .HMA extension are simply text files that contain code that you can quote-unquote inject into your ROM and make the changes that are reflected in the name of the script. With some exceptions I'll put on screen, all of these work for all of the Generation 3 games, except Ruby and Sapphire 1.2. As I said before, these are text files, so you can edit them in a text editor like Notepad. I recommend that before applying it, look inside to see what it does. You will find many, many comments that explain what the code does if you're unfamiliar with the syntax. There is a webpage on Hexmanic Advances GitHub that has the documentation for all of the commands that HMA scripts use. If you're interested, you can take a read and try to make your own Hexmanic Advanced script using some of the commands that are presented. If you really want to, you can put a feature request in our Discord featuring your HMA script, and if it's approved, we could bundle it with the download. Let's open the add fairy type script. As you can see, there's a list of things that this script does to your ROM when you apply it. And the code is broken up into sections, partly based on what game you're trying to edit, and other individual modules of the file. As I'm scrolling down, you'll see that a lot of the commands have a commercial at at the start of the line, and all comments or descriptions of the code start with a hashtag. If you're looking to only apply the scripts to your ROM instead of editing them or making other scripts, looking at the descriptions and skimming through the code is sufficient. You could theoretically use this HMA script to add other types in the game by changing a couple of values, but I won't be doing that for this tutorial. Here's the built-in manual on how to use Hexmanic Advanced Files. I will demonstrate applying a script momentarily. Before you apply HMA scripts to your ROM, it is indispensable to make a backup of it just in case you change your mind about applying them, or any edit to your ROM in general. As you're progressing through your ROM hacks, I recommend that you make lots and lots of backups, like make dozens or so. You'll never be certain about how many changes you want to roll back if you're going to resort to a backup. Now I'll show you how to make a backup in Hexmanic Advance. First you click File, then you click Export Backup, and you need to answer a prompt about your most recent change. After clicking OK, you're good to go. On the left of your screen, notice that the backups folder just got created. What's inside? A backup of your ROM and Tom L file, of course. Now let's get into some dragging and dropping. The script I'm going to implement first is the add fairy type script. We took a look at it earlier. We can take a look at it again though. For this tutorial, I also copied and pasted the HMA script so that they're in the same place as my ROM, save files, etc. What this script does is it expands the list of types so that fairy is considered a type. It adds a Pokedex search option and another room for the union room, both reserved for the fairy type. 
It implements the type effectivenesses for fairy interacting with other types. It automatically gives Pokemon that would have had fairy types in Gen 6 the fairy type. And it also adds sprite data for the fairy types in both the TM case and for Pokemon and move type icons. As I'm scrolling down, you'll see each of the bullet points being modularized, and you'll see the code segments that allow the fairy type to be fully implemented. Some things need to be changed, especially in the graphics, depending on what game you're editing, but the HMA script accounts for those differences among Ruby, Sapphire, Fire, Leaf Green, and Emerald. Now I'm ready to apply the script to my ROM. All I have to do is have my ROM open in HMA, and I drag the script into the window, and you'll see a preview that has the bulleted list I showed earlier. Upon releasing it, you'll see all of the changes occurring at rapid speed. Thus, you'll see HMA zoom through multiple tables and other areas of the ROM. Let's look at the aftermath. First, I go to Sweetkiss's Move Data. Use Ctrl and G to open the Go To menu. Type in something to filter your Go To destinations and click buttons till you get to the table you want to go to. As you see in the table panel, you will notice that Sweetkiss is now a fairy type move. Sweet, isn't it? If I go to the image that has the type icons, which is in the graphics subdirectory, you can see that at the top right you will see the fairy type being added. Lastly, I can go to the Pokemon data for Gardevoir, and you will notice that its secondary type is now fairy. You will have to manually implement fairy type moves, and I have a move editing tutorial that can assist with that. Let's apply the script in Emerald and see its changes. You'll see the changes happening at lightning speed, one after the other, as directed by the HMA file itself. I click the back arrow a couple of times to get to the type icons in Emerald, and if I scroll down, you will see the fairy type being added after the five contest types. I'm not going to go into why because that's a bit advanced, but I cycled through three palettes to show the fairy type being rendered as it would be in-game. Like in Fire Red, the fairy type icon in this image is placed in pretty much the same position. Also notice that unlike some ROM hacks, the three question mark type remains untouched. This is an advantage to expanding the type table this way. If you load your ROM after applying the fairy type script, you'll notice that the Pokemon that would get the fairy type in Generation 6 have the fairy type now. One final note about the fairy type script, if you go to data.pokemon.type.names, you'll notice that the fairy type is at the bottom of the list, on the left panel. On the right panel, it's directly after the dark type. This is significant because previous implementations of the fairy type require it so that you would have five blank types between dark and fairy. With this HMA script, you don't need to do that anymore. The other HMA script I will be showcasing in this video is the ability type swap script. This script makes a table where you can add your own abilities that function kind of like pixely and galvanize. You can change the type of one move to another and get a power boost for that move. Let's see what the script does by opening it in Notepad. Basically the file has code which makes a new table of ability effects. It also changes the battle mechanics so that moves that have their type changed also get a power boost, like how it is in Generation 6 and beyond. As I scroll down, you will notice that different games require different code segments to be modified. Hexmanic Advance can figure out which game that you are currently editing, and it will implement the correct routine without you needing to give it directions. Now let's drag and drop the ability type swap script into Pokemon Fire Red. Besides some battle mechanics changes, you will notice a new table that got inserted into the ROM. All of the necessary attributes are laid out in the table panel. The ability field, the original type field, the change type field, and the scale value, which is basically a percentage modifier to the base power of the move that got its type changed. Now we can customize it however we want. First, let's make the pixelate ability. In the ability field, I replace Blaze with an unused ability. I will change the name a bit later. In the original field, I select a normal type. In the change field, I select the fairy type, which we can do thanks to the previous script we applied. These two scripts work together beautifully. I change scale to 130 to reflect a 30% increase in the base power. What we can also do is expand the table by clicking the add one new button. And for this tutorial, I just decided to repurpose Liquid Ooze so that it changes Water-type moves into Poison-type moves, for no real reason. Despite this not intending to be an ability editing tutorial, I will rename Cacophony's ability anyway. 
I click on the right arrowhead that's next to Cacophony and it will take me to the Ability Names table. I go to the Name field and I rename Cacophony. The other text box is the Description field and you don't have that much room to work with, especially in Emerald. Note that the description data got moved to free space. You don't really need to worry about that. Here's a trick if you want to combat the space issue that Pokemon Emerald has with move descriptions. This doesn't work for Fire Red. So I'm in the same table in Emerald, and what I do is I go to Cacophony's entry, and I begin the new description with backslash CC0607, and then I type up an ordinary description. I also change the name to Pixelate as well. Here's a screenshot of what the ability description looks like in game. Fire Red does not have a slim font like this. Alright, before demonstrating all of the changes in game, I need to actually give a Pokemon Pixelate. For this tutorial, I'll give Gardevoir Pixelate. The Pokemon I'll be using to demonstrate Liquid Ooze is Tentacool, and it can already have that ability. Here is Pixelate in action. As you saw, the fairy move was super effective on this fighting type. And for Liquid Ooze, Surf is normally a water type move, but I made it so that it becomes a poison type in this case. Therefore, it cannot damage a steel type. To close off this tutorial, the HMA scripts you see on screen are not the only ones that are out there. Other HMA scripts may get added in future releases of Hexmanic Advance. And you can join our Discord, which the link is in the description, navigate to our custom HMA scripts text channel, look at the descriptions of many of the posts that we have there, and download the HMA scripts that you want to download. As I said before, if you change your mind about implementing a particular HMA script, make sure to make a backup before applying one so that you can go back to your ROM without having to manually undo the changes. That is it for basic tutorial number 9. You learned a lot about HMA scripts, where to get them, and what to do with them, and I hope you will put this knowledge to great use. There are some things in the past that you may have needed third-party software to do, but now you can use these HMA scripts in Hexmanic Advance to implement them. And plus, they're flexible. You can tweak the code a little bit and make the script do practically anything you want it to do. Play around with them, you'll have lots of fun. If you find any issues with any of the HMA scripts, do not hesitate to file a bug report in our bug reports channel. We will try to fix the issue as soon as we can. That's all I have for you today, fellow ROM hackers. I will see you in the next tutorial.